Now, based on all these, now we, we should understand the dynamics of a continuous time Markov chain, dynamics in the sense that how it behaves within time, okay? So let's say we have a three-state continuous time Markov chain here, and we have these transition rates, Q sub one, two, Q sub one, three, Q sub two, one, two, three, uh, three, one, and three, two, okay? So these are the state transition rates or the components of matrix Q. So I have in my infinitesimal generator matrix, I have here Q11, Q12, Q13, Q21, Q22, Q23, Q31, 32, and 33. And of course, Q11 is a negative value uh, which in magnitude equals the sum of Q12 and 13. Similarly, Q22 is a negative value and it's the sum of in magnitude Q21 and Q23. Okay, so that the, the sum of rows uh, uh, makes zero. Okay, and you see minus Q11, that is the sum of Q12 and Q13 is in fact the rate of the exponential distribution of the holding time in state one. So what does that mean? Let me raise these a bit. Suppose that x zero is one. That means I'm starting at state number one. At time zero, I'm here. So I'm going to stay in state one. And remember the holding time is exponential. So I'm going to stay in, I'm going to stay in state number one for a random time whose distribution is exponential. And the rate parameter of that distribution is minus Q11, this. That is equal to the sum of the rates going out of state one, Q12 and Q13, okay? Now, um, the Markov chain is going to stay in state one for an exponential distributed amount of time with mean minus one over Q11, or rather one over minus Q11. Then, of course, when it exits one, there is no coming back. There, there are no loops here. Uh, in contrast to discrete time Markov chains, we do not have self transitions here. They, it doesn't make sense. Uh, but when you exit state one, you will go to either state two or state three. Which one? Okay. The rates will determine that. Now you see, I have Q12 and Q13. Okay. So the probability that upon exiting state one, the probability that the Markov chain goes to two is equal to Q12 divided by Q12 plus Q13. And upon exiting state one, the probability that the Markov chain goes to rather than two, the probability that it goes to three is equal to Q13 divided by Q12 plus Q13. Okay. So let me just give you some numerical examples. Let's say th these rates, this is one, this is two. Let's say this is one over two. Let's say this is also two. Let's say this is um, zero and this is uh, two. Now, first thing you have to notice, rates are not probabilities. Okay, so I can assign two to rates, right? They cannot be negative. Okay, from state i to state j, they cannot be negative, okay? But they can exceed one because they are not probabilities, they are rates. A very essential distinction between um, trans transition probabilities and transition rates. So the rates can be larger than one. So let's say I start from state number one and I stay there for an exponential random variable amount of time. And the rate parameter of that is, well, I go to state number two with a rate of one half. And from state one, I go to state number three with a rate of two. So in total, 2.5. 2.5 is the rate parameter of the holding time 
that is exponential in state one, okay? So T1 exponential weight 2.5. Now, when the time comes, the Markov chain leaves state number one, and then it will either transit into two or three, but the transition rate into state two is one half, and the transition rate to state three is two. So the transition probabilities will be proportional. That means the probability that upon exiting one, the Markov chain will choose state number two is 20%, right? Because that is one half divided by one half plus two, 20%. And similarly, upon exiting state one, the Markov chain probability that the Markov chain chooses state number three is 80% because that is two divided by one half plus two, okay? Let's say it chose state number three, and then again, it will stay there for an exponentially distributed uh, random time, and the rates going out of state number three, you see from three to one is two, and from three to two is also two. So the total rate is four. That means the holding time in state three is exponential with rate four, okay? Therefore, it will, the Markov chain will stay in state number three for an exponential distributed amount of time whose rate parameter is four, or rather whose mean is one over four, okay? And upon exit, since the rates are equal, two to state one and two to state two, upon exiting state number three, the Markov chain will choose state number one or state number two with equal probabilities as the next state, okay? Let's say it chose state number two. And in state number two, the outgoing transition rates are one to state one and zero to state three. That means there will never be a state transition from state two to three, okay? This, this zero means that you will never make a transition from two to three. So the total rate out of state two is one, just this one. So that means the exponential, the, the, the rate parameter of the exponential parameter uh, the distribution of the holding time in state two is one. Okay, and since this rate is zero, upon exit, it will definitely go to state number one. But this one here, it's not a probability. Okay, do not confuse things. Since this is one, it doesn't mean a probability, it's a rate. I could have chosen 1.5 here then this would have changed. But the fact that uh, from state two, you will definitely go to state one would not have changed, okay? So this is how a continuous time Markov chain behaves.